All around the world, natural and technological disasters strike every day. In many cases, a good early warning system and the right information on time could considerably reduce injuries and the loss of life. Proper preparedness would save even more lives. Yet many communities are too remote or economically challenged to have the communications needed to save those lives. The 2004 tsunami is one of the many examples of this lack of communication. Many islanders would have lived if they could have been warned. The earthquake had been recorded by the different geological institutes across the world, but the Indonesian population, as well as the population in Thailand, Sri Lanka, India, and Somalia, were not alerted and the wave struck many of these countries as much as 10 hours after the earthquake was first detected. GDIN proposes to prevent that from happening again in such communities and also to provide the right information to help people develop disaster resistant communities. In the United States there are over 568 tribes, Indian nations, uh, sovereign nations, and GDIN can be really, really a resource, not only for us, but uh, for global-wide. And I think that's really what we're looking for. The Global Disaster Information Network, known as GDIN, was created in 1998 by an international meeting of disaster experts hosted by the U.S. State Department. The goal of this non-governmental organization is to establish early warning systems on territories where it needs, to facilitate the sharing of crucial information before and during a disaster, as well as to teach ways of reducing risks to hazards. This organization represents a collaborative partnership of experts from both the public and private sectors and from a variety of different countries. GDIN began in uh, 1998 um, as a result of an initiative from the White House, and the idea was to bring together experts from around the world who could find a better way uh, to share disaster information, particularly for those folks who live in remote locations, who don't have much electricity and poor telecommunications. And uh, two years ago decided to take the ideas that we had developed in looking at earthquakes in Turkey, floods in Africa, and other disasters, and apply them towards the development of a network for indigenous peoples. And the first aspect of that would be in New Mexico and Arizona with the 19 Pueblo tribes and the Navajo Nation. In the year 2000, the International Future Programs Department of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, known as OECD, launched a two-year project on emerging systemic risk to society. This project covered risk assessment and mitigation, as well as emergency issues and post-impact issues. It stressed the need for better early warning systems and especially better preparedness. This is easy to do in wealthy communities, but what about remote, economically challenged ones in Africa, Asia, and elsewhere? GDIN and OECD decided to create a partnership and pilot project with the Native American community of the United States to explore how to meet the challenge. We ended up with 36 policy recommendations. In the case of USA, we were required by the Department of State and the Global Disaster Information Network Group to work on the case of a sample of Native American tribes and we find out that they are facing a number of uh, risks and many of them are beyond the, the control of the local communities. We believe that they are in also in a difficult situation to have uh, sufficient uh, local resources to be in a position to control the situation. One of the first things to understand about providing a emergency network for indigenous peoples is that they don't have a lot of money. So the design has to first of all take that into account. It also has to provide very sophisticated information derived from satellites and ground sensors and, and other uh, packages of information to people who don't have email frequently, may not have radio, um, or even if they do have email, uh, they may not understand uh, GIS technology. As proposed under this pilot project, GDIN and OECD are working in cooperation with the Native American disaster managers in the Navajo and Pueblo nations to understand their needs in advance of a crisis 
and to assess and enhance her capacities to prepare for and to respond to disasters. Within an international context, GDIN plans to ultimately develop a network of nodes around the world serving indigenous and remotely placed populations such as those who suffered from the tsunami. First, however, the project will begin with pilot nodes, small disaster operation centers in Gallup and Laguna Pueblo, New Mexico, run by Indians to provide Indian land essential information needed for early warning, response, and mitigation. This information will be available anytime and anywhere to key disaster management decision makers and support personnel in Indian land in partnership with federal, state, and local authorities. The nodes will exploit and analyze multiple sources of data including imagery, geospatial information from satellites and ground sensors, or simple reports from the field to develop new knowledge useful in reducing vulnerability to hazards and in integrating it into information products. These products will be co-designed with the Native American community so that they are appropriate to the user his culture and his capacity to receive and utilize this information. The final product could be disseminated using a variety of methods including internet, radio, and telephone consistent with local capabilities. Typically a node will include a staff of three, a watch officer, a data analyst, and a profilist. The watch officer is the node manager and conducts outreach to the surrounding communities. The analyst works on data retrieval, GIS, problem analysis, and product development. The profilist develops user and geographic profiles, enters data, and administers the node's technology infrastructure. This way, GDIN will understand the risks to which buildings, monuments, fisheries, historical sites, or even individual tribe members are most vulnerable and how to reach them. The physical layout of the node would typically include a conference room, meeting rooms, and offices for the staff. Right information right format to the right people on time is a mantra of GDIN. The communications infrastructure of the node would include telephone, VSA, high-speed internet, HF, and CB radio. Up to three vehicles will each have CB and HF radio, a cell phone, and a mini-M satellite device in order to receive information anywhere on the reservation and support disaster response by helping authorities by providing crucial information. At other times, these vehicles could be on patrol throughout the reservation, providing information on disaster risks and mitigations, as well as education and training tools to average citizens so that they can reduce their risks. In other words, no matter how remote a tribe's person, they will always be within reach of GDIN. The network headquarters will be at IAIA, the Congressional Chartered Institute for American Indian Art in Santa Fe. IAIA already teaches indigenous peoples throughout the Americas in a modern, effective campus. GDIN will take advantage of that and use the campus as well to teach risk reduction and disaster response in a way that respects native cultures while also providing them access to the full range of modern disaster information and telecommunication techniques. GDIN will work in partnership with existing agencies and with data providers, not duplicating existing disaster response capabilities. Primary emphasis would be placed on facilitating collaboration with outside disaster organizations and data providers. The Pueblo Nation's number 19 separate enclaves of varying population spread across the western half of New Mexico. Each Pueblo has its own governor and administrative structure. Coordination among the Pueblos is fostered by the All Indian Pueblo Council, which includes representation from each tribe. Most tribes have poor telecommunications and are at risk from fires, floods, and other natural hazards, as well as hazardous fluids and gases from train derailments and pipeline disruptions. On the other hand, the Navajo Nation is situated across three states, Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah, and is the largest Native American reservation in the U.S., with more than 6 million acres and a population of more than 250,000 inhabitants. The nation is divided up in 110 communities, each under a chapter house and five different geographically based agencies. The capital of the reservation is Window Rock, Arizona. Unlike the Pueblo, who primarily live in small urban environments, Many Navajo primarily live in remote locations with minimum access to electricity or telecommunications. 
The police department, the fire department, and also the Navajo Rangers are responsible for safety management whenever a crisis occurs. A lot of natural or technological disasters happen on Indian land, and the means that the authorities have to protect their populations are really not enough. The lack of information is one of the critical difficulties they face, primarily due to poor telecommunications. Timely response is tough. Once the nodes are implemented, GDIN will work with Native American disaster managers to understand their needs in advance of a crisis and enhance their capabilities to respond. Uh, the difficulties we have specifically are that we uh, have a very difficult time in ascertaining the extent of a lot of these uh, these operations. We don't know how much area is involved. Um, say in a forest fire, we can't readily tell how much of the forest has been burned or what acreage. Uh, in flood emergencies, we have no idea as far as the extent of the disaster itself. Um, we can only guess and make educated guesses based on the, the area and empirical knowledge of that area. Uh, in the case of radionuclide contamination and the, the plumes that come up, we have absolutely no idea of the effect of those, uh, of, of those dust clouds and how far they travel. disaster, one of the advantages of GDIN is it's receiving information all the time from uh, U.S. and international satellite partners. So if they see a fire breakout in a remote part of the Navajo Reservation or one of the Pueblo Reservations, the system will know about it immediately. And working in partnership uh, with the U.S. Fire Service and uh, with other partners. For both Pueblo and Navajo, the lack of information about disaster events as they occur makes saving lives and property slow and dangerous for the indigenous populations, increasing their risks as well for response personnel. Often the information they need is fragmented. There's a lack of networks, systems, and processes to integrate disaster information. Too often the information is not formatted in a manner that can be readily used. All of these issues are further complicated by the lack of communications between the different agencies responsible for public safety and disaster response on Indian lands. The GDIN network, which was co-designed by the Pueblo Navajo, will solve those problems. We have a community emergency response team that's in place and these are individuals throughout the community and they represent certain areas in this community of ours. We come together and these could be firefighters in the community, community health nurses, could be the preschools, the schools, and the government here, which I represent being an administrator. So we come together and meet with outside agencies. The way we communicate is there's only one phone here at the chapter. The cell phones don't work in this valley, so and we rely on the, the police department or the fire department to get messages across on top of the hill, wherever, you know, that's, that's how we would communicate. Most of the time the officers are responding to calls solo by themselves and when they do request for a backup um, we, we do have some problems with our communication systems. In a crisis communication is king. If you don't have telecommunications and you don't have the right information people die, property is lost. So what we do is, by merging the, the communications capacity of the node with the communications vehicles, we can provide data to any first responder who needs it anywhere in the tribe. My name's Glenda Davis. I'm the program manager for the Navajo Nation Veterinary and Livestock Program. We take care of the Navajo Nation's animal and livestock resources, 
and some of the things that we do are um, disease investigations, uh, livestock treatments, we do a lot of diagnostic work. Um, many times that involves regulatory activities as well as foreign animal disease control and livestock is a lot of our foundation as far as economics and many of our ranchers they have livestock and that supports their families and their relatives. help animals it's much the same thing as helping humans. Um, the Navajo Nation in particular is an agrarian nation that depends on uh, wildlife, particularly deer uh, and other animals uh, for their, uh, their economy. To help them you basically use the same tools that you use to help humans. You take information from satellites, d derive data from it and create maps that show areas at risk of floods, fires, and so forth. By collecting this data together, you can determine vectors for disease. Most of the time, GDN will operate in a non-emergency environment where we're constantly collecting information and constantly sending it out to tribal leaders who need it, such as Glenda Davis, who works in the veterinary service of the Navajo Nation, but it might also be a farmer or it might also be a school, it could be whatever, in between crises to help to understand their risks and then during a the crisis to respond to it effectively and quickly. The GDIN project could be very valuable to us and the reason for that is that we don't have a good method of getting good information back, detailed information back where it needs to go. Uh, GDIN, as I understand it, could give us that information back immediately, instantaneously. And that could go a long way to making decisions a lot quicker. And I would say that it would cut our time, uh, conservative estimate, it would cut our time in half. I'm here to uh, tell you as president of the Navajo Nation, that I am in support of the Global Disaster Information Network and the legislation which, has de which is developed to provide a communications node on Navajo for emergency response and early warning to people. As I look at uh, the GDIN, as I look at the proposal that you are, are about to look at, or as I ask you to, to review that proposal, uh, we ask for your support. Uh, Indian country as a whole, uh, many of, of the reservations, many of the Pueblos have the same issues that we do. And I think this would be a good pilot for us to begin to start and look at how to better coordinate our efforts within Indian country. That brings uh, some uh, particular issues uh, that are uncommon to other parts of the, the United States and possibly even uncommon to some parts of the world. But in, in many cases, as you look at indigenous people, uh, some of those uh, issues are also very common uh, across the world. Uh, as you look at developing countries and as you look at areas that are beginning to industrialize themselves, that's where the Navajo Nation finds itself. And that's where many uh, Indian uh, nations find themselves. In conclusion, GDIN needs significant financial support to get this Indian pilot project off the ground. Once up and running, this initial node network will form the basis for establishing many other similar nodes around the United States to serve Native American and Native Alaskans, then eventually indigenous and remote populations in Canada and other parts of the Americas, then Africa and Asia. The need is great, the potential return in life saved and property damage mitigated is enormous and the solution is within our grasp. Through these networks of nodes, GDIN can meet its critical objective of getting the right information in the right form to the right people in time to make a critical difference in our ability to plan for, respond to, and mitigate a wide range of disaster events. But first we need to get the pilot project off the ground in Navajo and Pueblo nations. Okay.
Oh, yeah, we're too late, we're too late.